So this is a brief explanation of where the various parts of a time series have come from and what's going on behind what the computer just prints out for you. And um, say we're looking at a um, resting heart rate over 30 days, it is quite nice to sort of be able to look at it and maybe even predict what's going on. So, you know, to see is the trend really downwards or, you know, what exactly is going on? And um, our analysis tool enables us to get a better picture of that. So in your workbook, you've got tables. And those tables are dealing with data presented in quarters. So that means like, you know, January, February, March, etc., etc. So the year is divided into four quarters. To see what's going on sort of long term, what you want to do is you want to find the average for every full year. And to do that, we're actually going to find the average for a group of four quarters. And then we move on down and find the average for the next group of four quarters and so on. So what we're doing here is we're actually finding the average. So we've got the, the raw data for each of these quarters, adding them up, dividing by four and getting a result. And so on the slide here, you can see that that's exactly what we've done. We've added them up and we've got our result, added them up. And got our result. And um, what we need to do next though is we need to take those averages for four quarters and we need to average them. And I'll show you why on the next slide. Okay, so imagine this is quarter one, two, three, and four. And this line here represents our average for the raw data for those four quarters. And then this is average two, three, uh, sorry, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, quarter one of the next year. And this line here represents the average of the four values. Okay, you can't easily plot a point here and that would be where it would logically go for the middle of these four and same here you can't you can't plot a point just in the middle here so what we do is we take the average of one quarter uh, one group of four quarters we take the average of another group of four quarters and we find their midpoint and we put it over the middle of the five because now there's five five quarters whose data has gone into creating that average and so we plot that point there and then we move on and we get you know the average of another four quarters and we'd be taking that and averaging it finding the midpoint between that and the next one and we plot it here so um yeah so what we're doing is we're finding we're taking five quarters data in and we plot that that middle of the two um, two averages before, and they're called a moving a moving mean order four. So we plot them um, here, okay? And that's you know that's an accurate way of showing the um, where the average is, okay? And we're moving towards something called a centered moving mean. Okay, and then what we did when we found those centered moving means is we actually plot them on our graph and we can because you know they're on top of values. What I don't like about the book is it actually doesn't have very clear you know, spaces to plot them above, but you're going to plot them on your graph. And then we're moving on to seasonal effects. Now seasonal effect is something that happens obviously every season or it could be every Sunday something happens so maybe every Sunday there's a whole lot of traffic going down a particular road okay so that would be every Sunday so on a Sunday there'd be a spike in the number of cars on the road 
And so the seasonal effect is, you know, what's going on every, every season. So here in quarter three, we have an increase. In quarter four, it's a decrease. And that increase and decrease is below the centered moving mean we've worked out. Okay, so we're going to use the centered moving mean. And then we, we take out, we work it against the raw data and find out how far away it is from that average average line, average curve. So yeah, we're finding, you know, is it above or below? So here, quarter four dips below. Let's have a look down at this quarter four. This quarter four has also dipped below. So it seems there's a bit of a pattern going on where quarter fours dip below. Now what you do is these, these are called individual seasonal effects. And what you do is you take as many as you can and you average them. Here we've only got two quarter fours, so we can only average two quarter fours. So here they are, they're being averaged. And here is your average seasonal effect. And then what we do is we're going to plot the average seasonal effect. And it will look, you know, it'll look like a repeating pattern on our graphs. And it's above the centered moving mean, which is your zero line. And it's really important that your centered moving mean is, in fact, sometimes it's called the trend line. It's not really a line, it's usually a, a sort of a dotty curve. But your seasonal effect is always, you know, in relation to your centered moving mean. And finally, when we want to work out what we're going to have happening in the future, what we do is we have to take the centered moving mean and we have to add on our average seasonal effect. So every Sunday, there are 434 more cars than usual going up this road. So we add that on. And the way that our system, our um, NZ Grapher, calculates is called an additive model, where it's got the centered moving mean. And it says, OK, well, that's the average for, for that particular week. But wait a minute. Every Sunday, there's an extra 438 cars going down the street. So if it was about cars, then this would be what it means. So our model is, you know, ideally, if there was always an extra 434 cars going up the street on a Sunday, what it would look like. So it, this, this example is about pies. So, you know, if there really always were 434 extra pies sold in quarter three, then that's what the model would look like. Overall, there's an increase because that's what our centered moving mean is saying. But, you know, every quarter four, sorry, every quarter three is an extra 434. And then what we also look at is we look at what the actual data was. So we've got a model of, you know, if everything was always the same, if the increase was always the same, and each quarter, if the increase was always the same, if quarter one was always, you know, so many more. If quarter two was always that many less and whatever, then um, we'd have an ideal model. And then we also put onto our graph what the actual data was. So the model and the, um, the model with, you know, with what we would expect is actually called the recomposed model. And then we can make a prediction of what we expect from the information that we have. We have the, the trend, and you know, we can usually fit a pretty good sort of model to that. Often, it's, often it is a linear model that's used. And then we can work out what the average seasonal effect is. So we can, you know, work out that it should continue to go up in this pattern. And then we can actually create a forecast. Now our computer model um, generates a band of prediction for us.